This is a project I did with scrap, plywood, and 2x4s that were sitting in my basement. The idea was to make a small and simple guitar without screwing around with a bunch of fancy tools and, and bending wood or, or having to buy anything extra. I cut an angular profile out so that I could just use straight pieces for the sides of the body. I didn't measure the angles or lengths precisely, I just screwed the two pieces of plywood together and then cut out a profile. The plan was to be able to just put the top and bottom in between a 2x4 that was going to be turned into the neck and then just glue on sides. After I'd cut everything out and sanded it, I just went ahead and measured all the sides, marked each length on the guitar, added them all up so I knew how much side length I needed to cut, and then I cut out all the little pieces. I just cut a straight, or at least sort of straight, with the jigsaw strip, and then trimmed it to the lengths that I'd measured for the sides. Then the pieces go together as shown. For gluing and assembly, what I did instead of clamping it is I drilled down into the thickness of those sides and I was able to put screws in through the top and bottom that held them together while the glue was setting. If you look close, you'll see that I'm not actually drilling through the wood, I'm actually burning through it with a abrasive tool on a Dremel, which keeps the wood from splitting like a drill bit would split it on the really thin plywood. Then I just sort of screwed it all together and see how it fit up. It wasn't very square, so I had to make some adjustments, drill some more holes, clamp stuff together, but it came together pretty well. After I dry fit everything with screws, I went ahead and disassembled it, put glue on, and then screwed it all back together. The screws actually ended up staying in, after gluing, I didn't know if they were going to cause a problem with acoustics and stuff. Uh, they didn't seem to, and I just sort of left them in there. Figured it wasn't worth the trouble taking them out, it might cause problems. After I glued it all together, it didn't fit up perfect because I hadn't been very careful, so what I did is I mixed sawdust and wood glue to, to make like a, a wood fill putty, and then I filled that in, all the corners made them stronger, and, and filled in all the gaps and screw holes and stuff. The neck is not just the neck, it actually runs the whole length of the guitar and forms most of the strength of the guitar. You'll be able to see it through the sound hole later, after the guitar is finished. I did that because I didn't know how strong the plywood would be, and I wanted something solid to be able to screw the bridge into. The neck would definitely be better off as a stronger material. I whittled it pretty thin because I have small hands, and uh, the way it is now it's visibly warped after tensioning the strings. What I might do in a, on a further project is put in a counter-tensioning system that pulls the neck the opposite way on the under, underside of the guitar. I did a little cutting on the neck with the jigsaw, but mostly I roughed it out on the belt sander. I probably took more than 50% of the weight out of that 2x4 on a belt sander, which sounds really bad, but with a 36 grit belt, it really doesn't take very long. I roughed out the neck like this on the belt sander, but after I'd gotten the guitar together, what I did is I whittled it with my pocket knife to get it to fit perfect in my hand. So 
since the 2x4 was set underneath the top of the guitar it was a quarter inch lower from the top and to make the fretboard I wanted it to be raised up a little bit from the body so what I did is I cut out two strips that went on top of the, the guitar and then those two got glued on top of the neck and so the neck ended up being like a three layer composite. This is the section of wood that I used for the bridge. The first bridge I tried to make ended up being really small and peeled off the guitar as soon as I put the strings on, so this much more robust bridge screws directly into the 2x4 underneath it. What I'm doing here is I'm using the edge of the contact wheel on top of the sander to get like a a straight side on the slot and then you can see me whittling to finish it up and make it perfectly square. It was pretty difficult to actually keep that straight and I ended up making this part twice. I marked out the holes for the strings here being the same distance apart as they are on the nut at the top of the neck. That was a mistake and I realized that on a normal guitar the strings are they're not parallel they spread out a lot at the at the bottom of the bridge. I should have put some kind of metal backing or a washer or something around where the strings go in because the the little nut on the end of the, all the strings that keeps it from just slipping through the hole has sunk like really deeply into the wood. This is the actual bridge. I guess the other part wasn't really the bridge. This is the floating bridge. I used an aluminum cylinder on the nut and the bridge like that. At first I had just dremeled these little notches into the aluminum cylinder, but they buzzed and they didn't hold the strings very well, and what I ended up doing is turning uh, circular notches all the way around the cylinder. Since the boards were uneven, what I did is after I glued them up and had put the front on, I sanded them all flush. I marked a, a level line and then sanded them all down to the line before I screwed the back on. Again, I filled in all the gaps and sharp corners with a mixture of wood glue and sawdust. This is the pit guard I made. I cut it out of thin titanium and I anodized it using a blowtorch. I really like the colors that come off the polished titanium when you, when you fire anodize it this way. And I think it goes really well with the, the white top. I made the improved nut using a lathe instead of a dremel and I was able to cut even grooves that ran in a full circle around the, the cylinder that I used. It was a lot easier to space them out evenly this way as well. Instead of measuring the frets like a normal guitar scale, what I did is I used my tuner and I tested each position on each string and then bent the wire to make like a curved squiggly fret. I wanted to make an equal temperament guitar that didn't have any dissonance in the chords, but uh, the frets ended up being pretty out of tune anyways, and this was a pretty labor-intensive process. I just super glued the wire directly onto the fingerboard, but it stayed remarkably well.